I am terrible at finishing games. I've been making games for two years and I've only really completed like four games. This week, I'm gonna change that. I want to see how much better I can get at making games by making 10 games in 10 days. Let's hop right into it. Day one, boys and girls. I started the day off excited as the F word. I landed on a reverse duck hunt style game where you're the bird trying to dodge the hunter from shooting at you. The first thing I did was make a bird model. Then I created a pretty rough movement system. I was gonna go for like a flappy bird style system where you just click, but you're also gonna be able to change directions and dive. Then it was time to get started with the hunter AI. This reticle thing is like the only thing that turned out exactly as I envisioned it. Around this time, I went to the gym and got back around 7 p.m. I wouldn't even say I was halfway done with the project. I almost forgot to mention that if I don't finish the game by 12 p.m., I failed the challenge. I still had like half the project left, but I also had four hours, so I was still pretty relaxed. I underestimated how terrible I was at UI. By the time I got done with that, it was like 11. I still had to add sound and make the game look amazing, so I got to work. I cranked out a beautiful landscape, dude. Now, I saw to animate the character, so I hopped right on it, and with five minutes to the deadline, I had a complete game. They're right when they say the last 15% makes a difference because look at the difference this last hour made to the game. Going into this, I thought it was going to take me maybe four hours, but it ended up taking me like 11. Here's the finished product. Damn, Daryl, these birds are becoming agile. If you don't stop blaming these animals for your damn aim, I'm going to stop bringing you out here. Let me try. Jesus Christ, these birds are coked up. Daryl, get the family. Can you survive hunting season? Shoot the bird. Out now. Oh, baby. Welcome. To day two, I saw another video by another game developer where he made 3D Fruit Ninja. He had these freaking sweet mechanics where you could slice by swinging your mouse around, but he's slicing fruit. What? I want to slice zombies. That was my concept for the game. Started by making a camera controller script to help you look around with your mouse. Then I started on the sword. I wanted the sword to tilt in like the direction that you were turning. I just threw the camera script on the sword and then turned up the sensitivity and boom. Yo, that's badass. So I wanted the sword to cut whenever I flung my mouse. All I had to do was track the mouse's velocity. The mouse's velocity was over a certain number. Then you do a little slice animation. I had to do this on the X and Y axis Shoot because if I only... Damn. Zombie, All right, dog, chill. Luckily, a while back, I bought a zombie asset pack. I gave him some AI to chase the player. Animations, some collisions. Now for the spicy stuff. Watch this. Zombies coming up. Slice. Get killed, dude. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Woo! I then added the health system for you and the zombies. Munched up a little bit. And once I got back to work, the prototype was pretty much done. But it just felt like... Like it was missing something. Do I have time to add a gun? I know I'm supposed to be finishing this thing up, but I have to. I'll finish it, I promise. This was not a good idea because the day was pretty much over and I had like half the project to do. So I got to work. Modeled, shooting and collision system, ammo system, animations, muzzle flashes, switch weapon system. Boom, we're complete. By this point, I was like an hour away from having to wrap up the project. And I had another issue. Anytime I would blink, I'd have like a freaking loading screen for 30 minutes. It was so bad that I would click on a menu and by the time it was done loading, I completely forget why I clicked on it. Luckily, I powered through. I made an environment. And with 30 minutes left, I started on the audio. I got I got all the sound done, but the, the slicing just sounded a little bit off. <laughs> now, I knew why this was happening, but with like the slow loading screens, there was no fixing it. It wasn't even an option. So with like the last 10, 20 minutes, I fixed up the bugs that I could, packaged up the game, and this is what I got the show for it. Uh... <laughs> I'm cornered. What am I going to do? Ah, bah, bah. Sing, 
boys, we have a sponsor, baby. What? We made it, boys and girls. Let's go. It's Milano. I've been using Milano for like two years now. I like Milano because it's pretty much just an online whiteboard. That means you can drag and drop YouTube videos and pictures and also take notes. I've tried plenty of other idea planning software and they're just so restrictive. But with Milano, I could place as many things as I want anywhere on the screen. I used this thing for like a year without paying a cent just because of how useful the free version was. I love using it for to-do lists, as you could probably see. You could also collaborate on your Milano board with your boys. If you're like me and you need a structure to build your ideas off of, Milano has tons of niche-specific templates for you to use. Whether you be a designer, a photographer, a filmmaker, a game dev, the list goes on. I use Milano to plan this project right here, and I'm going to continue to use it for whenever I make a multiplayer game in the future. If you'd like to support me and have a tool that helps you become an efficient monster, Milano is available for free with no time limit. Sign up using the link in the description to start your next creative project. Let's get back into it. On day three, I woke up with a vision. The day before, I was talking to my brother, who's a helicopter pilot, about how helicopters work. This made me want to make my own helicopter that works just like they do in real life, in Unity. And then I'd show my brother, and he'd be proud of me. But this isn't a Disney movie, and so it went as you'd probably expect. I just spent the day adding random forces to random points on the helicopter. I was hoping I'd just stumble upon what people spent years trying to figure out, and then I did it, bro. <laughs> I freaking did it. I scrapped it all and went for what's practically moving a piece of paper around on the table. No physics whatsoever. There was another mechanic I wanted to try. I wanted to create homing missiles that would follow a UI reticle on the screen. Well, the problem is the UI reticle is on the camera and the enemy is all the way out here. So the missile wouldn't really have much to follow. So I cheated again and I just moved the UI out to where the enemy was, which is, it works. Going for realism with like the UI and the helicopter drained my time down to like one hour. I had to crank out the round system, the collision system, the UI, the sound. Luckily I had code from the previous games that I could mash together and it actually it turned out pretty sweet. Ooh. Come on, baby. The moral of the story is just have a lot of random code in your library and realism is for nerds. <laughs> Day four, I wanted to try out an endless runner like Jetpack Joyride. I wanted a runner where there would be obstacles in your path that you couldn't get past unless you destroyed them with, in this case, a bow. I made a bean, a ground, and then I made it where you could jump. Game was 30% complete already, baby. I scrolled the ground and then added ground off camera to make a seamless illusion. I made a few different ground tiles to make sure it was scalable. It was hard to see the bow from far away, so this helped me find the greatest asset on the Unity Asset Store. The outline asset. Do -do 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 -do. Out line asset. Now I had to make the beam look clean. I gave him a family guy effect where it looks cursed at any other angle except dead on for some reason. Then I started on something that's actually necessary. I made the bow pivot around a point based on where your mouse position is. Then I made it shoot some very necessarily outlined arrows. Then I went to the gym, got back to work, and my tired brain could not figure out why the colliders weren't working. The arrows were so inconsistent when they collided with stuff. It turned out to be a collider that I gave the arrow rotated once I instantly Instantiated it. Instantiation sucks. It cut my nice safe four hour window down to two hours. Loading screens once again plagued me at the end of the challenge, but I still managed to add a timer, a death screen, a start screen, some sound. Then I built the project. This was the finished product. Oh, ho, madam. They look as fun as hell. Um, I only date archers. Lucky for you, madam. I'm the best. I started kind of late on day five, but luckily I had an idea. I wanted to make a game like those mobile trampoline games just because I thought it would be fun to make, but I made a terrible mistake when starting this project. I put on Theo Vaughn while I was working. You know, I grew up around some real crazy poor white people. They had a dude in our town, no arms, used to fucking fight everybody. There was no focusing for like the first two hours of the project. I made a trampoline that would add force to the player. Then I made a script that would rotate your player to your will. I was ready to animate some cool flips, but for some reason, 
reason, I could not find a ready to animate character anywhere. I imported like four different models and all of them had some weird issue. Hindsight, I was probably just a little bit too picky for my choices. So I thought I found the perfect model. Everything was working. It was kind of funny, but his feet made the whole character corrupt. His feet were the reason that I couldn't use him for animating. Feet were in control of everything. I just stopped worrying about the character for right now. I was going to do an endless runner, but then I decided on a get over it style game, the rage games. So I started sketching out the level and then my dad asked me to go out to eat. You don't say no to that. Besides, how long could it take? Well, he took us to a carnival. We were there until like 10 o'clock and I barely started this game. So when I got home at like 10 o'clock, I put on Bob's hat to try to combine brain power. With our combined effort, I created this masterpiece. Baby. Oh, come on. Okay. Damn. Damn. Alright. Come on, Bean Man. Alright, we're almost there. Uh -oh, uh oh. Okay, we gotta hit his mouth. Oh shit. Yeah! Woo woo! It's day six. This day I had a really busy day and I was not trying to make a game to be honest with you guys. I got back from the gym at like 9 p.m. and I had like three hours to make a game. But using the emotions I was feeling at that moment, I conceived of a game concept. Like me resisting the urge to curl up in a ball, go get in my nice comfy bed and just make the game tomorrow, I created a game that would also test your will. I made a game where your only purpose is to control your compulsivity. You're put in a room with a button. If you're patient, don't seek short term pleasure, then you're rewarded with what you wanted from the start to click the button. I know what you're thinking. No way he thought about this when his brain was functioning at 10%, but it's true I did. Imagine what's going through my head right now. I had a vision of creating Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but with motorcycles. I found this trick a while back where you could just create a sphere, add some physics to it, make it where you could control it, put whatever model you want on top of it, and it creates a cool horror effect. I was gonna use this for Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and it works great until you hit a ramp, and that's like half of the game. But I was determined, and I spent hours trying to make it work. Alas, it was getting too close to the deadline for comfort, and I decided to just simplify it. I just decided to make a racing game. I found a nice car model, I found a track, and then I threw those babies in. But now, I had an issue. You need an opponent. How am I gonna make an opponent that operates the same way the player does, and also follows the track at the same time? I thought I could just cheat and make him turn when he gets to a corner, but that was very, very inconsistent. <laughs> I couldn't even conceive of a solution, but then I looked out the window. It was Code Monkey to the rescue. His tutorial did exactly what I wanted. It was like three lines of code. This was the most valuable thing that I found in this whole 10 day venture. I don't really know how it works, but it does. And I could use it for other stuff. Top off the game, I made some checkpoints that the player had to cross. I used my favorite asset on some of those, some particle effects and some win and lose UI. But I had one last problem. Like I could not find for the life of me any car sound. Like they would always be too short or they would just be like the rev. So I decided to go make make my own car sounds. All I did was and then just pitched it down and this is what it sounds like. Dude, that sounds so real, dude. That's weird. I threw all the sounds in the game plus some and then this is what we ended up with. Come on, baby. Oh. Almost went out of bounds. Come on, baby. Come on. Win this game. Oh, he's messed up. Yeah, baby. Woo! I think this is my favorite game that I made this project. Even though it's like really basic, the AI just feels like a real player, and that was freaking sweet. I don't remember if I said this, but I'm a boxer now. And this is my first day sparring, which is pretty much fighting, cranked down a few notches. I spent all day training for that. And after I got demolished, I came home and realized 
I gotta make a game. So I just tried to make Doodle Jump. I just decided to copy Trampolio. That's what I'm calling whatever day this was. And then I got started on a procedural trampoline spawner. After a lot of tweaking, I got something I was pretty happy with. And now that's 40% of the game complete. I made an environment and I made like the mountains in the back as tall as possible so you can see the progression of how high you get. And I found a Doodle Jump model online and I tossed them in there. I added a height tracker. I added it to the desk screen too. And I made it so you die if you fall a certain distance below the camera the rotating oh, controls man. stayed in the game from trampolio so i mean that was pretty sweet no Day 9, my enthusiasm for the game was diminishing. I sat there for about an hour thinking of a game idea. I decided on a boxing game where you use the mouse buttons to decide which punch you're gonna throw. And you move the mouse around to dodge. I realized after starting this project that it's literally Punch a Bunch, a game that another game developer on YouTube's making, Ponty Pants. I love you, Ponty. I just decided to lean into it. So I made the player, and just like that bow game, I made the player pivot around the point, and now I hide my arch nemesis, Colliders. You got them working easy? What's up? Oh, and the AI driving game taught me how to give the AI the same control scheme as the player. I made the environment completely black with this cool effect. I gave you both a health system. I added the necessary UI, some cool effects, some sound effects. Oh, and I almost forgot. A10, I was excited to finish off this project with a bang. And I also felt like I had to make the game crazy for the finale. So I was feeling the pressure a little bit. To add to that, I had to finish it by five o'clock because I was going on a trip with my family. I felt like I exhausted every idea that I wanted to make this week already. Bro, what if it was a game where one side you have like a little paddle and then you have an AI paddle on the other side. It's like ping pong where you have to hit a ball back and forth on a merge Pac-Man and GTA. I felt like I was looking for an idea for about two hours hours. I'm pretty good at perceiving time, but I finally found something I was interested in making. I remember this game that I played when I was little called Pocket Gods. You were literally just torturing these people on an island, and you tried to find cool, new, unique ways to torture them. Top tier game, by the way, dude. So I started on a simple 3D Pocket God. So I found an island asset on the asset store. I made the character, made everything look a little bit better. Then I had to go pick up my brother early from school. On the way back, I was realizing that I only had like four hours left, and I saw the pack. The car ride was like 14 hours, and I thought that if I could figure out a way to connect to my computer from the road i could work on the way there and i found this thing called remote desktop that does just that but now i needed something to actually use as a pc on the road the phone is trash and nobody in my family had a laptop except for my brother who had a chromebook well that'll do all i need is wi-fi but it's a school chromebook those pesky school locked this thing down like it was alcatraz all i needed to do was use remote desktop which is a google made application not you stupid school and i tried every single loophole in the book just shy of completely resetting the computer but these damn website restrictions dude so the mission was failed and i was about an hour away from having to leave so i just decided to do what i could so i made the dude walk around at random points in the map added some ambient sounds and that's it i wanted to finish it for you guys it is kind of poetic though it's like a god simulator all you're doing is watching this dude live you're not doing anything to it and he's probably blaming you for all of his problems. So that concludes the 10 games and 10 days challenge. 10 out of 10 would do again. I leveled up my game development skills by at least 30 levels. I found the outline asset that I continue to use forever. I found out how to make an AI use custom controls. I'm better with collisions. I'm better with everything. I'm the best. I've learned a valuable lesson about how you should just accept the jank sometimes. And now I could say that I've made more than five games. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what game you like the most and if I should expand on it please like the video if you enjoyed it because it's 10 days of footage takes a long time to edit it would be very appreciated and then subscribe if you want to see more videos like this